I hope you can see the screen as well. Can you see the screen? <laughs> Okay, fine. So uh, basically, in the first module, we were dealing with some of the basics regarding the constitution. And that included the basic definition of constitution, then history or background of our, our constitution. Then most importantly, the salient features of our constitution. Then the second uh, part of the first module was dealing with the preamble of the constitution and the different you know terms that have been included. Certain specific terms have been included in preamble of constitution. All those terms have been uh, discussed. Then uh, we started off with the uh, we started off discussing the various articles and various parts and schedules of constitution. Started off with the union and its territory, and then with the citizenship, its types, and how it can be achieved or can be attained, and how it can be terminated. How the citizenship can be terminated. So all those things we discussed in the first module we will just have a, a recap on what are things we we have seen in the first module so i have prepared some of that so we started off basically with the definition of constitution it's obviously the fundamental law. Of, I mean, since you are having three mark questions also in your question paper, you can expect uh, short answer questions also. Okay, you may be asked questions like this. You define constitution like that. I mean, different the types of which are the different types of constitution, and uh, which are the different sources of Indian constitution. Like, uh, which all are, which all were the constitutions from which you know the Indian constitution adopted uh, the different methodologies. So starting starting off with the definition of constitution, it is a fundamental law of the country. It is a body of rules and regulations written as well as unwritten, whereby the government is organized and is functioning. It is a collection of fundamental principles according to which the powers of the government, the rights of the governed, and the relationship between the two are adjusted. And you can see uh, plenty of definitions for the term constitution. Uh, you might find some other definitions in your uh, notes and some other definitions in your PPT are also uh, as a whole that all the definitions say just one thing it is or the, you can state the constitution as a body or it's a book which contains the rules and regulations whereby the government has been organized and how the government functions so it contains the constitution contains certain principles according which according to which the powers of the government have been distributed how the powers of the government is been distributed and what are the rights of the people who are being governed, right? The rights of the people governed and the relationship between the government and the people. These are the basic things which are being contained in the constitution. Rights of the people, obviously duties, then the powers of the government and the relationship between the two. Two in the sense, relationship between the government and the people who are being governed. So all these will be the contents of the constitution. Then typology, like which are the different types of constitution. If you are asked like that, you can uh, write you know, these points. So like, there is classification based on codification status. That, that is how the constitution is being coded, whether it is in the written manner or it is unwritten. So on that basis, we are having two classifications, a written constitution and unwritten constitution. Ours is, uh, that is the Indian constitution is a written one. And you can see the examples for that. Uh, constitution of india pakistan usa all these constitutions are uh, written constitutions then unwritten constitutions means or you can call it as uncodified constitution like in constitution of uk canada etc then classification based on evolution status that is how the constitution has been evolved based on that two types are there evolved constitution that is no specific date of origin it evolved over a period of time that is evolved constitution. For example, you can say the constitution of UK. Then enacted constitution. There is a date of implementation. As in our case, our constitution came in a particular date. So we call it as an enacted constitution. So based on the evolution status, we are having two types. Evolved constitution and enacted constitution. 
then classification based on rigidity rigidity means whether the amendments are possible or not that is actually what we call it as rigid and flexible rigid in the sense all the articles or all the contents and the rules and regulations in the constitution will remain as such there won't be any scope for changing or amending the points flexible in the sense it can be changed or can be modified a little bit so on that basis on the basis of rigidity you are having two types rigid constitution and flexible constitution our constitution that is indian constitution is a blend of this rigidity and flexible constitution so rigid constitution example you can say uh, american constitution flexible constitution example you can see uh, british constitution so our constitution is a mix of uh, both these criteria that is rigidity and flexibility then uh, the most important thing uh, was historical background of the constitution this was also a part of our first module then how our constitution evolved what is the history behind the constitution so i have marked few points you can we can just go through that the idea of the constitution was first proposed by m n roy in the year 1934 and later on in 1935 in the indian national congress jawaharlal nehru officially demanded this this demand for the creation of constituent assembly was accepted by the british government in lilith goes august offer of 1940 Cripps mission came in 1942 and recognized the demand of framing a constitution by an elected constituent assembly and give indians a dominion status you can see the terms which have been going through first it was been proposed by m n roy in the year 1934 jawaharlal nehru officially demanded uh, the constitution then cripps mission came in 1942 and recognized the demand for framing a constitution by an elected constituent assembly the constituent assembly was the body behind the framing the constitution constituent assembly is the body behind framing the constitution but the cripps proposal was rejected later the labor party came into power in england with clement attlee as its prime minister his government was more sympathetic towards india and wanted to solve the problems of india so initially the, uh, as per the cripps mission i mean cripps Cripps mission actually uh, recognized the demand of a constitution for indians but uh, that proposal was rejected after that when the labor party came into power in england with clement attlee as the prime minister so you remember that this uh, like uh, the, the our our uh, you know our demand for constitution was approved at the time when england was governed by clement attlee as its prime minister that was the time when our proposal for a constitution was being accepted so the second mission that is the cabinet mission was then sent to india the cabinet mission came into india on 4th march 1946 it consisted of three british members lawrence stafford cripps and mr alexander the cabinet mission discussed the framework of the constitution and laid down in some details the procedure to be followed by the constitution drafting board as per the suggestion of cabinet mission a constituent assembly will be formed of the representatives of provincial assemblies and the princely states each provinces and each princely state or group of states were allotted seats in proportion to their respective population so the constituent assembly will be formed with representatives from provincial assemblies and princely states and uh, the number of representations the number of representatives from each you know each these bodies that is assemblies as well as princely states depends upon the population of that particular area so the total members of the constituent assembly were 389 out of which 296 members represented the british provinces and 93 members represented the princely states so you just go i mean you just recollect the things that we discussed initially it was me proposed that is the uh, the proposal was actually laid down by m n roy then cripps mission was sent and the proposal uh, you know given by cripps was being rejected later when the labor party came into power in england under clement attlee he was uh, more sympathetic towards indians and as a result of that he you know he you know, recognized the demands of indians for framing a constitution and for that a three member cabinet mission was been sent to india the cabinet mission discussed the requirements and a requirement of constituent assembly was also been discussed 
and as per the suggestion of cabinet mission a constituent assembly was formed with the representatives of both uh, provincial assemblies and princely states that number of representations depends upon the population so the total members in the constituent assembly remember the constituent assembly is actually the body which is behind the framing of indian constitution so the total members of the constituent assembly were 389 out of which 296 members represented british provinces and 93 members represented princely states the constituent assembly was first met on 9th december 1946 with dr sachidanand sinha as its temporary chairman on 11th december 1946 dr rajendra prasad was elected as the permanent chairman and hc mukherjee became the vice chairman and uh, you just i mean if you remember these names then it will be easy for you when you you know uh, go for some psc exams or something like that you will face many questions from the constitution side as well so if possible you can remember the names or else you should remember at least few points uh, regarding the historical background so who was the first chairman who was the first chairman that is the temporary chairman was dr sachidananda sinha and the first permanent chairman was dr rajendra prasad with hc mugaji as the vice vice chairman Okay, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar became the chairman of its drafting committee on December 11, 1946. So the chairman of Constitution Drafting Committee was Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Chairman of the Constitution Assembly, that is, that is a permanent chairman of the Constitution Assembly, was Dr. Rajendra Prasad. So the first sitting ended on 23 December 1946. On 29 August. 1947 drafting committee was formed with seven members under the chairmanship of dr b r ambedkar the committee studied the constitutions of various countries remember we take the good fe good features from the different constitutions around the world so this committee that is a drafting committee in fact studied the constitutions of various countries various other countries and took the good features from every constitution and included them in our constitution so the different aspects like you know the uh, directive principles of state policy and uh, you know fundamental duties all these things were been uh, you know all these have been taken from other constitutions so the good features from the different constitutions around the world were been included in the indian constitution the draft was prepared by february 1948 in 26 november 1949 the constitution of india was passed and adopted by the constituent assembly in 24th january 1950 the constituent assembly had its last meeting and obviously uh, during the republic that is 26th january 1950 the new constitution came into effect and this is actually the timeline these are the uh, different important dates you know when you uh, go through the historical background of constitution so the new constitution came into effect on 26th january 1950 the process actually took Two years, eleven months, and eighteen days at a total expenditure of six point four million to finish. Then, C. Uh, Rajagopal Rajari took over the Lord Mountbatten and became the first Governor General of India. India thus became a republic, and Dr. Rajendra Prasad was the first President. And this is how the historical background of Constitution goes. It all started with a proposal made by Sir M. N. Roy, and Jawaharlal Nehru of Indian National Congress actually demanded for that, and the rest is all discussed. The first mission was Cripps mission, which was you know uh, you know which was actually been sent you know to study the demand for framing a constitution, but that proposal was actually been rejected. uh usually you can see these two you know questions in your psc exams are all cripps mission and cabinet mission don't get confused between these two cabinet mission's proposal was actually been uh, you know approved or that was actually that was actually the leading point towards the formation of constituent assembly
so the second important topic that we discussed in the first module was the salient features of our our constitution that is which are the different features i mean obviously the different features have been taken or you know are been adopted from the different constitutions around the world as well so we will just see which are the different features and many features are there out of which if you are asked for a 10 mark question you need to write at least 6 to 7 points so the first point being the lengthiest constitution of the world the indian constitution is one of the lengthiest constitutions in the world and it is also very detailed at present the constitution of india consists of 474 70 articles 25 parts and 12 schedules the parent document for uh, the tra for drafting the indian constitution was the government of india act 1935 so first feature is it is one of the lengthiest constitutions of the world second point drawn from various sources that we all already mentioned right now the indian constitution was framed from multiple sources including the government of india act 1935 and other countries constitutions for example basic structure that is federal scheme judiciary governors emergency powers public service commissions administrative details etc was actually borrowed from the government of india act 1935 fundamental rights was actually been taken from american constitution directive principles were been was been taken from ireland constitution that is I irish constitution similarly ma many other you know sources and many other features are there these are some of the examples for uh, how we drawn you know the points from various sources the lengthiest constitution of the world second being the various features have been drawn from various other countries constitution as well as the government of india act 1935 then this was another point that was also been discussed that is blend of our constitution is a blend of rigidity and flexibility indian constitution has gone through 103 that's actually a mistake as of now we are having 105 amendments and the latest amendment was during uh, this year august i think during august we had one more amendment i think while uh, discussing in the class at the time of our you know at the time when we discussed the first module i mentioned it like 104 amendments but now as as of now as of today we are having 105 amendments the latest latest amendment was in uh, august 2021 which was actually uh, dealing with providing powers to the state for preparing its own obc list that is uh, the power for preparing obc list was been was actually is actually given to the state itself so that was the latest amendment and that amendment was actually in august 2021 so all to the we are having 105 amendments as of now and since that is a recent development that is a possible question as okay then can expect a more question what is actually the 105th amendment since that happened recently so it is actually a providing power to the state 105th amendment is actually providing the power to the state to prepare its own obc list okay Indian constitution has gone through 105 amendments so far but there are certain steps to be satisfied before bringing in the amendment thus the indian constitution is a unique blend of rigidity and flexibility why we call it as uh, a, a rigid one i mean if it is possible to amend the uh, you know articles or amend the points within the constitution we can consider it as a flexible one but in order to you know make this possible in order to make the amendments possible certain steps has to be satisfied and that's why we call it as a blend of rigid as well as flexible nature 
then uh, another feature of our constitution is universal adult suffrage that is the concept of adult suffrage allows every citizen of our country who is above 18 years has a right to vote in the elections any adult who is eligible to vote should not be discriminated on the basis of gender caste and religion that is all the adult citizens who are above 18 years have the right to vote in elections also they should not be discriminated on any basis like gender caste and religion then our is a federal system obviously the indian constitution includes all the federal characteristics of governance such as dual government system that is the central government system as well as the state system then the division of powers between the three state organs that is executive judiciary and legislature constitutional supremacy independent judiciary and bicameralism that is lower house and upper house that is a another feature that is federal system that is we our government system is actually distributed to both center as well as state then how you know the powers have been divided between the center and state that we have already seen in the fourth module i think regarding which all are the topics or parameters on which state government will be able to make decisions and which are the parameters like you know we have dealt with in state union list and all then another feature is parliamentary form of government the constitution of india provides for a parliamentary system of government at the center as well as in every state of the union the president of india is a constitutional head with nominal powers the union council of ministers headed by the prime minister is the real executive the union council of ministers headed by the prime minister is the real executive ministers are essential essentially the members of the union parliament on similar lines a parliamentary government is also at work in each state with the governor as its executive head so uh, when we deal with the union government president is the head and the, all these things are discussed already discussed in the second third and fourth modules so in the union we'll be having uh, president as the constitutional head and the real executive head will be the prime minister similarly at the state we'll be having chief minister governor and we'll be having the legislative assembly the legislative assembly is actually headed by the chief minister of the state in short a major feature of indian constitution is parliamentary form of government then establishment of sovereign se socialist secular democratic republic i mean all these terms you can see in uh, the preamble also right i hope you remember the preamble of our constitution so the term sovereignty is the backbone of our indian constitution that protects the authority of the people the system of socialism promotes equality among people and ensures the welfare of people secularism means the development of and unity of various religions mm -hmm. then you have democracy which provides a people with power to govern the term republic provides the power to elect their own representatives so these are the different terms these are also the different uh, these can also be considered as the salient features of constitution sovereign socialist secular democratic and republic then another feature is the our constitution includes fundamental rights also so fundamental rights are those rights which are essential for the intellectual moral and spiritual development of the citizens of india fundamental rights apply universally to all citizens irrespective of religion caste or gender these include right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation right to freedom of religion cultural and educational rights and finally the right to constitutional remedies
Then another feature is DPSP, that is Directive Principles of State Policy. In part four of the Constitution, the Directive Principles of State Policies aims to make India a welfare state. That is the point. What is actually the aim or what is the reason behind formation of Directive Principles of State Policy? Now to make India a welfare state. So Dr. B. R. Ambedkar calls the Directive Principles as the Indian Constitution's novel feature. Then independent judiciary. The judiciary ensures the pro proper functioning of the constitution and enforcement of various provisions of the constitution. The constitution makers ensured that judiciary has to be independent so that it will not, it will not be biased. The Supreme Court is considered as the watchdog of democracy. So these are the basic features, basic salient features of the constitution. The lengthiest constitution of the world. And another point is that it's been drawn, that is our constitution is drawn from various sources. And some, uh, some points you can remember, that is, DPSP is drawn from Irish constitution. Fundamental rights is actually drawn from American constitution like that. Then the nature of constitution being uh, rigid as well as flexible. As of now, we have 105 amendments. Then universal adult suffrage, that is, all the citizens who are above 18 years has the right to vote in elections. And there should not be any discriminations on the basis of gender, caste, and religion. Then another point is being the federal system. That is the relationship between the center and union. We having both uh, our, uh, you know, our powers will be distributed between the center and state. Then another point is parliamentary form of government. That is, we'll be having a uh, parliament at the union with the president of the constitutional head. Then the parliament will be headed by the prime minister. Then similarly, we'll be having a parliament, go parliamentary government at the state also, which is called legislative assembly, where the governor will be considered as the uh, head, nominal head, and the real head will be the real head of the legislative assembly will be the chief minister of state. Then fundamental rights, DPSP, that is directive principles of state policy, and finally independent judiciary. Independent judiciary in the sense, Supreme Court, we are having a Supreme Court, which is considered as the watchdog of democracy. So these are the salient features of Indian Constitution. So, uh, so far we have learned or we have revised two basic facts. One was the historical background and the other is the salient features of Indian Constitution. And now the third part, which includes the citizenship that we will discuss. In the next. Yes. Here you can see uh, citizenship. This is also part of first mode. So uh, when dealing with citizenship, you will have to deal with how, uh, which are the different, you know, ways in which a person can acquire citizenship and how he can uh, remove citizenship or how uh, citizenship can be terminated. So these are the two factors. So before that, the cons uh, we just go through the definition. That is, the Constitution of India is primary. Is the primary legal instrument that lays down who is deemed to be a citizen of India. The Constitution of India does not define the term citizen. Citizenship is listed in the union list under the Constitution and thus is under the exclusive jurisdiction of the Parliament. So, uh, regarding all the matters, uh, all the matters of con I mean citizenship, uh, the exclusive jurisdiction will be within the Parliament. Parliament, in exercise of power given to it under Article 11 of the Constitution, has passed the Indian Citizenship Act of 1955. This act provides for the acquisition and termination of citizenship in India. So, the Parliament will be having the sole power to make acts or make rules and regulations on the parameter called citizenship. Then, which are the different modes of acquiring? citizenship acquisition of citizenship by birth section 3 said that whoever is taking birth in india from 26th january 1950 to 1st july 1987 would automatically get indian citizenship that is whoever is taking birth in india from 26th january 1950 
to 1st July 1987 would automatically get Indian citizenship. Then the Amendment Act of 1986 changed this provision from 1st July 1987 to 3rd December 2003. And it is and it said that the person's birth should be in India as well as his or her one parent should be an Indian to acquire Indian citizenship. The Amendment Act of uh, 2003 said that if anybody is taking birth in India after 3rd December 2003 will get an Indian citizenship when his or her both parents or at least any one parent must be an Indian and other parents should not be an illegal immigrant. That is acquisition of citizenship by birth. So initially it was from 1950 to 1987. Between this period, any person who is taking birth in India would auto automatically get Indian citizenship. And then you can see the Amendment Act of 1986 and, 90 and 2003. Then you have acquisition of citizenship by descent. Section 4 says that after 26th January 1950, whoever is taking birth outside India can also acquire Indian citizenship by the help of their descent. That is, if his or her father is an Indian citizen, they would get Indian citizenship. Whoever is taking birth outside India can also acquire Indian citizenship by the help of their descent. That is, if his or her father is an Indian citizen, they would get an Indian citizenship. Then that was been amended in 1992. Either father or mother being Indian citizen, he or she could get Indian citizen citizenship. So initially, it is initially it was his father is an Indian citizen. Then only a person who is taking birth outside India can get the Indian citizenship. But later it was been amended as either father or mother being Indian citizen, he or she could get Indian citizenship. The current law says that after 3rd December 2004, if anyone's birthplace is outside India, then they will not get any, uh, they will not get Indian citizenship as before. Under one year of that child's birth, their parents should go to that country's Indian consulate and should register their child as an Indian citizen. Their child who is a minor doesn't have any other country's passport and currently this law only applies. Then acquisition of citizenship by registration. This specifies that some people's categories and it says that the particular categories of people want to submit an application to the central government and they can also be registered as Indian citizens. So this is actually based on uh, submitting an application to the central government. So acquisition of citizen citizenship by birth, by descent, by registration. Then by naturalization. Acquisition of citizenship by incorporation of territory. You can just go through that. And this is applicable when any foreign territory is becoming a part of India then the government of India will specify who all will become the citizens of India. Then modes of losing Indian citizenship, that is renunciation of citizenship. An Indian citizen of full age and capacity can renounce his Indian citizenship by making a declaration to that effect and having it registered. One is uh, by, you know, one mode of losing Indian citizenship is, is by giving a declaration to the government regarding he is not, uh, he, you know, he does not want to be a citizen of India. Declaration of that sort has to be given to the government of India. 
another is termination of citizenship if a citizen of india voluntarily acquires the citizenship of another country he shall cease to be a citizen of india deprivation of citizenship this is like a compulsory termination of citizenship of india and you can see several points for that the citizen has obtained the citizenship by means of fraud false representation or concealment of any material fact i mean these are the points based on which his uh, citizenship is actually been cancelled or terminated and this is actually a compulsory termination of citizenship This will be enough for today. You can mark your attendance. Thank you.